We set sail on this new sea because there is new knowledge to be gained. Zero, all engine running. Liftoff, we have a liftoff, 32 minutes past the hour. The 1950s and 60s was a time of political turmoil in the United States and around the world. It was the height of the Cold War and the tensions between the two global superpowers, the United States and the Soviet Union, were increasing. Events like the Cuban Missile Crisis and the United States' placement of nuclear warheads in Turkey put the world at the brink of an all-out nuclear war. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States. Both nations, in constant competition, brought forth one of the most important political, societal, and technological turning points in the 20th century. During the climax of tension between the two nations within the Cold War, the space race was born. This race consisted of many technological achievements, one of which was the founding of NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, in 1958. NASA had achieved one of the greatest technological feats in recent history by spearheading the first mission to put a man on the moon through the Apollo 11 mission. Though Apollo 11 acted greatly as a technological turning point, it also acted as a major societal and political turning point that changed the Cold War. On October 4, 1957, Russia launched the world's first satellite into orbit, Sputnik 1. The reason NASA was founded has to do with the Soviet Union suddenly stunning the world by launching an artificial satellite. This was the first time the United States tasted bitter defeat and marked the beginning of the competitive space race. Four months later, on January 31, 1958, the United States Army and Navy launched its first satellite, Explorer 1. Because of this loss, the United States wanted to gain momentum for the space program. However, NASA did not succeed in overtaking the next major event of the space race. On April 12, 1961, the Soviet Union launched the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin, aboard the Vostok 1. The United States launched Project Mercury, which carried Alan Shepard to space less than one month later, on May 5, 1961, narrowly marking the defeat of the United States. The Soviet Union again beat us uh, at a first, putting a human being into space. The Soviet Union's technological triumphs caused fear and loss of morale among American citizens. Many began to worry and fear the Soviet Union's superiority as a nation. The people of the United States wanted that to change. We couldn't keep taking second to the communists. The United States needed a turning point, not only in the space race, but one that could resonate within and turn around the Cold War. We needed to demonstrate uh, you know, American superiority in technology and other things. In 1961, the newly elected President John F. Kennedy was very instrumental in accelerating the space exploration program. Speeches made to a joint session of Congress in May 1961 and later at Rice University in September 1962 declared President Kennedy's bold objective that would change the course of the space race. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. This ambitious goal called for a massive program to accomplish such a task. It was the Apollo program, first initiated by President Eisenhower, that would become the new cornerstone towards meeting President Kennedy's goal. Building the Apollo 11 mission required great amounts of resources, both in terms of money and brain power. Thousands of engineers, scientists, teachers, mathematicians, and others were hard at work with a budget of nearly $25 billion. On July 16, 1969, the Apollo 11 mission was launched carrying three astronauts. The whole world gathered and watched as Apollo 11 lifted off and entered into orbit. After four days of travel, Houston Mission Control gave the clearance to land the lunar module on the surface of the moon with command module pilot Michael Collins remaining in lunar orbit. After tense final moments, the lunar module carrying Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong landed safely on the moon on July 20th, 1969, marking the victor of the race to the moon as the United States of America. News of a safe landing was broadcasted around the world and the crowd reacted with massive acclaim. 
Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Man on the moon. What? <laughs> we're going to be busy for a minute. The main reaction after touchdown was, my God, could it really have been so easy? And I thank the Americans also for what they've done for the world. After more than a decade of work, one of the greatest human achievements had finally been reached. They brought and left an American flag on the moon, a bag filled with symbolic things from both the United States and the Soviet Union regarding space exploration, in addition to a plaque that read, Airman from the planet Earth, first set foot upon the moon, July 1969, AD. It came in peace for all mankind. This acted as a very significant turning point in the Cold War. The race to the moon had been won, showing there can be peaceful competition between two nations. The crew boarded the lunar module for departure on July 21st. The lunar module crew rejoined Michael Collins in the command module and began the three-day journey back to Earth, eventually landing back on July 24th. Beating the Soviet Union to the moon boosted support and confidence for everyone in America during the Cold War and symbolized Russia's inferiority to the United States. The Apollo 11 mission, uh, its significance is because it was the first mission to actually land on the moon and return safely. So it met that goal and we jumped ahead of the Russians. The moon was so significant because to think, oh, everybody looks up at the moon. That's something every human being on Earth has seen. And here we did something really unbelievable before them brought a lot more respect to the United States. After losing several space exploration milestones, the ultimate technological goal had been achieved, turning around what seemed to be a losing streak in the space race. The success of the Apollo 11 mission gave the United States the final pull in the large-scale political tug-of-war. People said it's not that you did it, it's not that you did it, it's we did it. I think people all over the world felt like this was a human achievement not simply uh, achievement of the United States. As a result of accomplishing the foremost goal of the space race, the world took on a more peaceful tone regarding space exploration, and the USSR reaffirmed the US as a formidable foe in the Cold War. But I think the space program in general has uh, softened relations between us and the Soviet Union. One of the things that it developed is uh, friendship with the Russian cosmonauts. And one of my best friends was Alexei Leonov. He said, I'd like you to know we oppose each other in the Cold War, but we have seen this Earth from space, and he is my brother. Since the Apollo 11 mission, many other missions have been deployed, including six more Apollo missions and modern endeavors such as the Mars rover and the initiation of international space programs. In effect, the Apollo 11 voyage assisted in mitigating political tensions between the two countries, encouraging space exploration as a means of quenching human curiosity. Furthermore, it has unified many nations to cooperate for the purpose of studying the vast universe surrounding us. One example of a globally unified project occurring in the present day is the International Space Station. Fifteen countries have been working together since the 1990s to launch a collaborative space station for the purposes of microgravity research. Contributions from all countries total nearly 150 billion US dollars. In total, 159 components were assembled from all participating countries. Today, these countries work together peacefully aboard the ISS to advance humankind through space exploration, emphasizing how far we've come since the milestone of the Apollo 11 mission. Strong and influential people, such as Presidents John F. Kennedy and Dwight D. Eisenhower, led the United States in the pursuit of bold goals and ideas regarding space exploration. Individual people, such as Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins, have gone down in history as American heroes for what they achieved for the country in the space race. The ideas led forth by John F. Kennedy to step foot on the moon by the end of the 1960s not only acted as a national turning point in aeronautic science, but also a turning point for many around the world, bringing people of all races and nationalities together to witness such a massive human achievement. The events of the Apollo 11 mission greatly influenced global politics and the ideology of space exploration. The American people believing in the idea of advancements in space technology for the good of mankind were key in reaching this extraordinary milestone that turned around the Cold War. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.